Hello everybody and welcome to another PMP end of month review. Well, what is the PMP? Why that's Painters Motivating Painters, our Facebook group focused on helping you take your next step in the hobby. 2020 has come to a close and that means it's time for the last review of this style ever. Uh, don't worry, these reviews are still going to happen. They're just going to be different in 2021. Uh, so I'm going to say this right up top so everybody who watches knows what's happening. Uh, from now on going forward, it's not just going to be post whatever and I review everything because honestly these take a really long time and are pretty mentally draining. Uh, but I do still like doing them and want to make sure I'm still able to give feedback to everybody. So the way we're going to do that in 2021 is uh, we are going to... Uh, we're going to... Every month there will be a focus for that particular month's submissions. So for example, at one month it might be monsters. So, you know, monsters or large scale or something like that. So you can submit a finished project if it's of the type that that month is. And we'll cycle through month after month for particular types of projects. Anything you submit that's not the right type of project, and by the way, I have ultimate, uh, you know, judging on that, I'm just gonna delete it out of the event, okay? Like, we won't review it, it's that easy. Doesn't mean anything personal offense. I do not mean any insult to anyone. If yours happens to get in, it's because it wasn't the right, it doesn't happen to get in, it's because it wasn't the right type of thing. This will allow me to go deeper with with uh, individual explanations while still giving everyone over a chance, over the year, a chance to uh, submit things. And really focus more on different types of projects and things like that that uh, we might not normally get. So for example, we might do, you know, we're gonna do a month where we focus completely on finished armies, which is normally a really hard thing to review in a format like this where I've got maybe two minutes to talk about everybody's piece at most and usually needing to keep it shorter than that if I wanna keep these less than like three hours long. Uh, so that's the basic idea. But if you wanna join us in the PMP, uh, make it one of your New Year's resolutions. You can find the link right down below. Join in, you do have to answer all of the questions. Don't forget all questions, all three must be answered or you don't get in, okay? So with that being said, let's jump into the reviews and start giving some feedback. So here we go. Start off with Mark Tan, uh, trying to push the level outside of my comfort zone. Uh, what would you suggest I do to continue pushing the mini? Sure. So what do we need to do? Well, we do need to still push the contrast a little more. Uh, it needs to come up in, the, in a more complete and total volumetric way. That is to say, your lower areas are still just as highlighted as your top areas. We also need to focus on the different elements and make sure that they all have the same level of attention. For example, these bone bits on his back don't have the same level of attention as the armor, which is, you know, I mean, the armor is the main piece, but if you're talking about display or competition level, everything needs to have the same attention. Same with this guy he's holding. Like, we have blends that aren't smooth over here. We have lots of spots. If you're going to include anything on the mini, it all has to be done to the same level. As well, I would push things like rusty and crusty goodness on our uh, on all of our different metallic pieces. Make sure you're working in oxidation on things like the copper in realistic ways as to how copper actually oxidizes. Deeper tones and blacks on the bones. Um, things like this pink tube, these pink tubings, they don't have the same level of contrast as everything else. So that's the stuff that jumps out to me right away, Mark. I hope that helps. All right, next up, uh, Steve Dooley, uh, first time poster. Uh, painting for about two years now and looking for general advice. Sure. So, Steve, my basic advice to you is going to be the same advice you're going to hear me give a lot throughout these reviews, which is we need to push the contrast. Basically, everything on here doesn't have enough contrast. Uh, whether we're talking about the gray armor itself, the blue of the robes, his skin, uh, which lacks the contrast of both value and hue, uh, the metallics, the bone, the shield, and the sword... And, and that's just being a newer painter. Newer painters are always afraid to push the contrast and don't know how to exactly push it in the right areas to reflect the surface lighting type. Uh, so, but my main challenge to you, Steve, going forward is gonna be continue pushing your contrast of value. Um, I have lots of videos on it. Um, Trevarian has what I consider to be a fantastic video on uh, value contrast. So check that out on his channel if you're not a follower there. Um, but specifically what I would focus on with something like this is things like the armor. The armor needs to have you know, volumetric highlighting. And to remind everybody our scale, we're gonna use a simple one through five scale. Traditional art uses a one through 10. We use one through five to keep it simple. One is the highest highlight, five is the deepest shadow, three is your midtone. so two and four are half steps. So basically the challenge here, Steve, is we've got a lot of three and 
basically that's it. So we need to really start upping that contrast to bring more visual interest and direct the eye around the piece. Okay, next up, Thomas, uh, test model for his doc. Sure. So well, here's what I would say to you, Thomas. Again, I mean, definitely more contrast. Now, I don't know how many of these girls you intend to paint. You know, the average army can have 30, 60, 90 of these girls in various forms. Uh, so, you know, I understand you might be wanting to keep it at a tabletop level. I would still push the contrast on things like the blue boots and the skin. The skin doesn't have enough reds, pink tones, magentas, that kind of thing. And the blue is just very, very sam singularly colored all the way around. So I would really focus on that. Even contrast of some level where that blue is getting darker, it's going to make a big difference in helping the piece pop and stand out. Lights are brighter against darks. So uh, adding that contrast will really help. So there you go. That would be my number one piece of advice for you. John, uh, basically with his uh, first mind stealer, he used some oil paints and any input uh, on the face, the blending, the shading. Sure. So one of the things I would say to you, John, is that we're going to want to continue to pop that face up. We do still need to push the contrast a little farther. I think it's good. You you <clears throat> did use the oil paints in a nice way here, so I enjoy that. Um, like the color, the composition works fine for me. You've got no issues with any of that. I think that's a nice contrast there. Uh, what I would say is continue pushing the contrast, especially on things like the horns, because they're going to frame the face and draw attention up here. Things like on the top of the Spheranx's face, we want the eye drawn right up there right and right now that's actually a rather dark part of the model the face itself you've got a small t line but that's even that's kind of muted um beyond that think about volumetrics on the rest of the cat things like the top of the haunches the shoulders up here and up here should be significantly brighter than the lower area so you want to make sure you're taking not just the individual volumes of the muscle structure but the total volume of the miniature into account when doing that kind of lighting so there you go hope that helps john Okay, next up, Niles. Uh, this is a miniature from Etherfield board game. Never heard of it. Sounds cool. Uh, tried to go for more contrast than I normally have done. Uh, so here's the question. Did I get the contrast mostly right and what should be the thing you should focus on? Um, yeah, so the contrast feels pretty good. Your contrast of value is a very bright, chaotic, pretty crazy model. Uh, so it's kind of hard to read. Color compositionally, like the green that, that you've chosen doesn't really work with this blue and, uh, and and purple. But to me, the number one thing we need to work on is... So I got two actual things I'll challenge you on. It seems like you're in the right area of contrast. So now the next step immediately after that is we've got to work on smoothing things out. So work on glazing, things like that to bring the colors together, especially when you're working in blues and purples. Those are colors that when you go up into the higher highlights, they have a high amount of opacity. So transitions are really visible. So you're going to need to glaze... Uh, so the edges and stuff like that to bring it back down and create smooth transitions. Uh, that's the number one thing that jumps out at me uh, across the entire model is we need to push that blending smoother. The other thing I noticed is with the skin, um, it's not just, remember, contrast isn't just about light. It's also about hue. So right now the, the skin doesn't really, like it has some very sharp unblended contrast, but it also needs variation of hue. So we need to see pink tones in there, magenta tones, purple tones, stuff like that. Uh, especially on female skin, which should have these nice, smooth, soft, supple transitions uh, across it. So that's going to be my advice for you of the next two things you want to work on there, Niles. All right, next up, Robin, uh, basically looking for the next skin tone review. Did he draw everything together? So, Robin, we're definitely moving in a better direction here. This guy is way better than last month, and last month was already pretty darn good. Uh, so, yes, I think we're absolutely moving in the right direction. Now, you asked the question about should we start, do we need to start talking about other colors? Yes, yes, we do. Um, I'll ignore that we're just focusing on the skin here. I'm not going to talk about the rest of the model because that's your focus. We've still got some areas of contrast we need to push up. Knuckles are a big one. When you grip around something, your knuckles whiten out. So we need to make sure the knuckles are catching some more highlights. Uh, I th So I like the highlight on the shoulder, the arm. This arm is uh, is really, really well done. You also want to think about some deeper shadows like maybe here in this area, bringing it down it kind of in line under here, this right here, with what you've got under, he under the... Uh, under the arm itself where he's casting a shadow there. Uh, but I think we're in the right place. Now it's really just a question of glazing and smoothing it down, Robin. But this is, you're, you're in the right place. Now, as to include uh, the inclusion of blues, yeah, 100% blues and greens are the way you want to go when we're going like full on, you know, crazy competition level. Um, what you're going to push that in is blue is the shadows. Uh, greens you can use as interesting alternate colors in the shadows to oppose the light. 
Um, if you look at Frazetta paintings, that's where you're going to really see green used in a cool way. He used it to create alien low tones often is what he was doing. Um, so he'll use it as a, a contrasting shadow color in the fours, basically, um, off light source. So that that way, and then they'll fade into blues, uh, just to create a weird sort of otherworldly setting. Uh, you don't have to worry about something like green in most cases, but blues are very useful because they are natural shadow colors. Uh, right now, I have a very blue shadow under my chin because I have a very warm light above me. Okay, so stuff like that is where you're going to want to focus in on. So, hope that helps. But great stuff, Robin. Okay, next up, uh, Julius. Uh, all right, so tried to. Doing some first non-metallic gold, how to improve. Sure. So um, this is pretty good. Uh, I see we followed uh, some Juan Hidalgo here. Uh, that's what it feels like. Or maybe some Darren Latham. You know, we've got that kind of thing going on. Uh, what we need to push on is a little bit more of the low tones, the fours to fives. We've got a little too much yellow, not enough of the brown-red transition that happens in the low of gold, especially here on the leg, stuff like that. So around here, your shadow, the shadow line is too thin that kind of thing. Uh, so we just need to, you know, kind of smooth that down. If you're going to do these little in the shadow reflection points that like Juan and Darren tend to do, you want to focus on at the same time, you there needs to be a careful glaze over top of them that makes them look kind of fuzzed because their light isn't still like ever a single shot. <coughs> it doesn't, it isn't a drop of paint hitting something, right? It's still, it's a bright off reflection of like a ground reflection or something hitting it. Uh, it's a specular highlight that's that where the eye is seeing it, but it still needs to have some fuzz to it because ultimately light is still going to diffuse when it hits the surface, right? Um, the other thing I would say is on things like these chest plates, you always want to think about moving the shadow up and having a little bit of a secondary reflection there because whenever you're just going from straight light to straight dark, it's always going to be boring. On the rest of it, you're covering this transition where it's going light, dark, light, dark. But on the chest plate, we just have this one light transition. Having a second, like moving the shadows up the, the breast plate and then having a light source on the bottom is going to do a lot to increase that overall visual interest. So there you go. Hope that helps, Julius. All right, next up, uh, Tassos, uh, basically asking about, uh, you know, just kind of help and, and sort of uh, his contrast on the mini. So the picture's kind of far away, so it's hard to tell too much. And this is a very busy mini in general. This is always like, I've seen people post this before. It's a really tough mini to review because he's going like this in this really weird position and he's holding this goblin and it's just, it's a difficult mini to, to review, I'll be honest with you. So I'm going to look at this one because it's kind of the best picture of the troll. Um, my answer from what I can see so far is it feels like we need to push the contrast on the supplementary items some more and then probably work some actual color tones into the skin. So more variation of hue in the skin, addition of purple tones, red tones to make the thing feel alive in some way, especially in the fours and fives area. And then also things like the bones need more light, especially down here, the ones hanging. So those need a little more either texture or contrast or both. Uh, but I feel like you're going a good direction. Make sure you're smoothing out your blends on things like that red thing sash whatever his tabard that he's wearing um yeah i'd say those would be my main piece of feedback for you like i said it's, it's tough to get a, a good image of it because we're far away but i think that's about about the feedback i would give so uh more variation of hue especially on the skin look at working in some other colors and then make sure you're adding your contrast to all the elements of value all right dan uh so this is a great model here. Uh, basically, uh, just looking for feedback on this. Yeah, so a lot of fun with the Chimera colors here. Uh, I like the armor. I think the challenges with the armor, we didn't push the contrast up high enough in the ones and twos. Uh, I like the reds. Make sure if you're going to do that kind of texture of it, like I understand what you're going for, kind of a crushed satin texture. The dots need to be smaller and uh, much less visible. Like they have to be there, but you almost need to feel like the impression of dots. Like dots called you a week ago and you suddenly remember that the dots called you a week ago. That's kind of the level of dots. Um, you, like you can't see that much of visibility thing in satin, right? It's more, it's more fine than that. As to the armor itself, keep pushing that contrast up. It needs to, like I understand it's not the steel that's on her shoulder, but we still need to push that a little bit higher uh, in some areas, especially like we've got some white light catches, but then we, they're just very alone, right? So a little bit of a blend up into those and then still the white light catch, because again, light's going to diffuse when it hits an area. So a little bit more push in that one, two area going up to those, 
those uh, light catches, and I think you'll be in a good place. Okay, next up. Uh, John Winsdale, uh, tips uh, on the skin and thoughts on the cloak. Sure. So the skin is, uh, I've, you know, I comment on skin a lot. It needs more contrast, especially in the purple tones. We also probably need to push the highlights more, but there definitely needs more fives, more deep shadows, especially in things like under the head, between the fingers, down here where it connects to the wrists, right? Like we've got a lot of deep shadows this guy would be casting that we're not capturing here. So uh, the addition of more variation of both hue and value together in things the, like the, uh, something like a, uh, a black leather from scale 75 or, you know, some kind of deep purple, red, brown color. Anything in that general space will work, okay? Uh, the, so that's kind of the main thing I would say on the skin there. Now, on the cloak, let's spin around to that. Um, again, it's good, but we need to, again, respect the sort of volumetric nature of the cloak a little more. Light would be gathered up around the shoulders and the top a little more than on the bottom, so there should be a flow to it as it goes down, uh, where this area is really the brightest. We also want to go back and kind of smooth some of this. Some of our transitions here, like here to here, here to here, are rather harsh. We want to make sure those have a smooth transition unless there's a direct reason above it where there would be a hard cast shadow, which in this case there wouldn't, given how you've told me the light is hitting, because you told me the light is coming in like this, so this thing would not be casting a hard shadow down on it, right? If, if the fig was completely lit from this side, I would buy a shadow line like this, because this would be hanging over and casting it, but you made this area up here really bright and told me the light is coming basically from a, sort of this direction, right? So you always want to think about where you're placing that, where your highlights are telling me the light is coming from, and then how that's working with your, your individual shading, so... Hope that helps, John. All right, next up, Newt. Uh, looking for some feedback on the ogre conversion. Yeah, sure. So, uh, cool conversion. Uh, I like this butcher. Uh, let's go to this zoomed out image. Uh, all your little tattoos are fun. I enjoy those. Um, I think what we need to do is really, like, the skin feels rough. The paint feels rough uh, to some way. And I'm not sure why. So I think probably what I would recommend is is kind of working on controlling your paint a little more, smoothing it down. Something's going wrong. There might be with your primer layer. Can't really tell, but the paint feels dry and dusty is basically what I'm saying. Now, uh, I, you know, my, my basic advice would be the same. We need to keep pushing the contrast. Um, you can kind of see it in this picture. Let's go back to the black and white. I mean, you can see there's just not enough of a run here of value. It's pretty evident how much of just the standard kind of mid grays we've got in this picture. The face is an interesting excep exception. I, I actually quite like the face. You worked in a lot of red tones. You have a lot of deeper shadows. You have some higher highlights. We need to carry that to some degree to the rest of the models, right? Where we're pushing those highlights up and uh, adding in things like red tones and pink tones and stuff like that. And uh, bringing down into some more natural volumetric shadows around the muscles. So there you go, Newt. Uh, okay, Scott. Uh, Peace entered into competition, was trying to paint this librarian with a color shift paint job for the armor. How can I make the color shift effect more believable and make this a more competitive piece? Sure. So, I mean, there's a lot to say here. One, don't do stuff like this in a competition piece. So, like, there's, I mean, competition has its own sort of things you'll learn. I, My honest answer, Scott, is I wouldn't worry about competition yet. We've got some other sort of fundamental things that we need to, to focus on. So, like, and I don't mean that as any insult. I just mean, like, that's what I'm reading here. Okay? So, because your number one challenge we need to work on is not doing something like color shifting. Like, you're trying to do... You're trying to run a marathon, I need you to run a 5K first, right? And what we're not doing here is including contrast, okay? So, like, that's just number one baseline. Also, I would avoid stuff like this. Like, if you're going to do a competition piece, just so this is a general note about competition, don't put giant things in front of your miniatures. This isn't the model. This is the model. This is what matters, right? So, like, putting a big giant thing in front of your miniature that blocks off your vision and is really bright and really distracting and really not part of the piece doesn't help. Okay, so that's number one. Compositionally, we've got too many colors. Like, there is red, yellow, orange, blue, green, and purple in this mini. That's the rainbow. I don't need it all. We gotta, we gotta control that palette. We gotta bring it down into, into, into control, right? So, the, like, when I look at this guy and I look at the back here, like, this black is just flat black. The cloak is just basically brown. The gold is just basically gold. And, you know, like, that's it. Like, we, all of this needs pushing of contrast long before we try, like, a really complicated manual color shift effect, right? So, walk before you run is my point here. 
work on the fundamentals and then things like how do I achieve a color shift, we'll, you'll know because you'll have the fundamentals mastered and you'll understand like how the lighting conditions would shift colors and stuff like that. And you'll, you'll be able to more easily paint that once you get that kind of experience under your belt. So I don't mean, I know that sounds harsh, Scott, but I, I don't mean it any harsh way. I just, I want to be straight with you, right? And me telling you like a bunch of stuff of how to do that is not going to be the help you need right now. What we need is to work on our paint cleanliness, our application and up our contrast and the smoothness of it, right? I would also get rid of whatever metallics these are, just as a side note there. They're, I like that visible pigment is pretty bad. Um, but yeah, when I say things like paint cleanliness and smoothness of application, you know, see the like red and the paper on these books and things like that. Like we, the gold isn't creating a smooth line around here. There's just like little things like that. That stuff gets noticed in competition like that. No judge misses that. Uh, if I can see it in two minutes, they'll see it in two minutes. Uh, so, especially with the model in their hand. Okay? So, there you go. Uh, all right. Paul Holmes, uh, looking, uh, basically he's going for a 1980-style vehicle. And uh, so, you know, he said he'll be pushed the contrast. First of all, there's almost no contrast on this vehicle. Paul, I like how you said you pushed it a little more, but it's basically not present. <laughs> now, that's fine. I'm not going to beat you up for it. If what you're literally going for is recreating the 1980s style of, of paint jobs, there was no contrast on those minis. Okay. So like fine and dandy, if that's the goal, then let's recreate that thing. Okay. Um, like this red is pretty flat. Um, now that being said, it's fine. Like it's a great bright red. It looks good. What do we do then? Well, one, we need to probably smooth out these edges. If you're going to do ed this kind of like speaking through edge highlighting, it needs to be really sharp, really thin, and just have the slightest small fade of a second color. Black, intermediate color, ultra crisp edge highlight. Like it needs to be like a razor around there. And all of these elements should have it. All the panel lines, all these little vents, all everything, right? And they need to feel the same intensity. Uh, so that would be my biggest advice for you. I mean, I think if you're going for that like intense 80s style, like the cover of a white dwarf or something from 1991, you, you nailed it. Like that's what this feels like, right? So I have no issue with any of that. I'm not going to tell you to paint a different style. Paint the style that makes you happy. Uh, but yeah, that's that's what I would say. Then you got to go all the way with that style and really like pop those edges bright, get everything really clean. It becomes, that style was all about like hyper precise, minimal contrast, uh, ultra technical painting right so that's what you got to get okay next up dave uh so army of one orc bust basically uh you know asking about like uh why couldn't i get a one or two highlight in hair with oils and so on and so forth okay so let's talk this through a couple thoughts one oils are good don't do everything with oils like i don't do hair with oils hair works best with acrylic paints because hair is built of sharp thin lines Right tool, right job. I know when we discover a new tool, or you buy a new tool, you're excited to use it for everything. You know, I don't grab a hammer and when I'm trying to put a screw in a wall. I get a screwdriver because that's the right tool, right? Same thing here. Hair works best with acrylic paint because you can control it a lot better. If you wanted to set like initial values with oils quickly, let it dry and then do all the acrylic work on top. That's fine. No issue. You know, easy breezy. Great. Fantastic. Now, what are the things I, the reason you couldn't do it is because oils kill one and two highlights on their initial application because it dirties the paint very naturally. So you've got to go back in with second applications and smooth it down. That's where the acrylics would come in. Now, as to the orc skin itself, uh, we, again, definitely much more contrast of both value and hue. You know, when you're doing busts, this is the first time I'm going to say this, but I'm going to talk about it a lot because I know a lot of people posted their first busts. So here it is, everybody. Here's my thing I'm going to say it once. When you paint busts, you've got to paint until you're almost insane and then paint twice as much as that. More detail, more color, more variation of hue, more texture, more, 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 more. You cannot paint a bust with the same level you do a 28 mil miniature. It does not work. It does not sell. Humans have lots of details and the more you, or, or orcish female monsters. Uh, in this case, when you scale things up, more of that will become visible. Like the hair, I should be able to start seeing individual texture very clearly because of the scale she's at like i would i would see individual hairs right um the skin needs like reds and purples and tones like that mixed into it right 
uh, the scarf, the the scars she has like along here need to stand out and have like the little bits of healed, you know, pink inc uh, inc occlusions into the skin underneath it, that kind of thing, right? So that's the main stuff that jumps out at me. If you're like oils kill ones and twos on your first pass, that's why you can't do it all with just oils in one pass. You have to paint with oils, you let it dry, then you come back in and you do the you do the next round of work, either acrylics on top, oils on top, whatever the case. All right, next up, uh, Bartaz, uh, painted Drachnar, mostly in oils and enamels over acrylic base. Appreciate your feedback on the, the flesh and the fresh blood effects. All right, sure. Uh, my honest feedback for you, Bartaz, is I freaking love it. The fresh blood effects look great. I mean, this is fantastic. Like, I love the drips. I think you nailed them. You nailed them. Uh, and I think the skin looks wonderful. Like, this is great contrast of hue and color. You could maybe mix in a little bit more in a few places of a slight red slight red like a deeper red uh i'm thinking like an indian shadow from scale 75 or something you know that kind of tone uh but this is great i mean like i love we've got we've got a one through five clearly demarcated nice volumes good light lines his face is still drawing attention and this has been a long journey for you bartas and i think this is a real capstone piece uh he's fantastic very well done very very well done Okay, next up, Apollo, uh, sometimes since submitted, Primaris Chaplain. Uh, general, feel the piece if it's adequate for display and if the minis blended well with his base. Sure, so uh, I can answer the last question first, which is, yeah, I think he's fine. I, it's great. He stands out from it while still feeling a part of it. You did a good job. You mixed the pigment up in. I got no problem with the, the you know, general piece. So that works fine. Um, as a display of mini, yeah, I mean, I think the number one thing that jumps out at me is probably the black armor still needs to push a little more contrast if we're going to go all the way, all you know, kind of all the way in. And then the non-metallic gold still isn't selling because I don't have enough two. Um, I've got some bright one edges and stuff like that, but I don't have enough two. I don't have enough of that white yellow pushing up out of it. Uh, that's where I think we, we need to kind of push that up. But this is a great piece. Um, I really like the skin. I like the value and hue contrast on the face. I think that's really selling for me. Uh, so yeah, overall, I uh, really like the freehand Templar logo or whatever on his on his um, shoulder pad. I think that really works. So yeah, I mean, I think it's good. Uh, I think keep pushing your contrast a little bit more on the armor and on and and then working with your gold. Actually, this this strange lighting here actually makes it look a little better. So maybe it was just a lighting issue, but I still feel like we need a little more two in there. But on the whole, it's good. I like the halo, the iron halo, more than I like this up here. I think this is where we've got the opportunity for improvement more than back here. This, I think, looks pretty good. So there we go. Good stuff, Apollo. All right, Duarte. Uh, three different non-metallic attempts and which colors are you used to make the skin feel more lifelike? Sure. Uh, yeah, so let's talk about the non-metallic. Uh, it's um, good on a thing of this size. Like, bust non-metallics are hard because they have to really sell in a big way. Um, the shield does not sell to me. Uh, I'll say that. Like, it doesn't feel bright enough. It, it, it feels like a comic book black and white rendering of metallics. Um, the armor shoulder pads sell the most for me, like going back to this guy. Um, but we, you know, here's the trick. When you're getting into reflective steel armor at this scale, we can't just use black to white anymore. That doesn't work at this scale, okay? Steel, when it's reflecting on a 28 mil miniature, non-metallics, you can kind of keep it in, you know, one gray tone spectrum, and that's fine because we're losing some of the, we can lose some of that. I, like, if you're talking true display piece, you still need to integrate colors. But here... This is bright enough, shiny enough. There should be reflections of the world around it, at least in tone. This piece, you've told me there's a light reflection right here, and it's right next to this bright blonde beard, and yet there is no yellow pushed into here at all, right? Or, or sort of red tone or whatever that would push in from his skin, that kind of stuff. When you get this big, non-metallic gets really complicated because you got to start thinking about all the different colors of the world. And that's not I'm talking about environmental lighting. I just mean like what's on the piece that would be reflecting, right? And those need to all become part of your composition. So it 
there's areas where we need to get darker. Like you need more five in some places of really deep shadow. But at the same time, now we need the variation of hue integrated into non-metallics to actually sell that it's not just paint, that to sell that it's really reflective metal at this scale. Now, the skin looks pretty good. Um, what we need to integrate there is probably a, a higher highlights. Like we don't push the ones and twos up enough. Uh, that's basically our issue. A little more red than nose. You've got good variation of hue for the most part. You could use a little bit more reds in various places, around the ear, in the ear, under the eye, on the bottom of the nose, things like that. But really what we suffer from here is a lack of true highlights, uh, especially when we get up to a big bust scale. You know, look at my head right now. Look at these lights. This is a one and two, okay? These are bright reflections. This guy doesn't have that, right? He needs to, you need to capture all the way up to those really bright, intense reflections because skin is oily, it's satin. So there you go. All right, next up, Sean, uh, finish and throg. Uh, basically, uh, also curious your feedback for the flesh tones and how they, uh, adding the red glazes and general feedback on anything you can work more on. Sure. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I mean, Throg is a pretty messy model. Uh, I'll say that he's kind of hard to paint well, um, just because it's kind of an old fine cast model. So I think he did a fine enough job dealing with a really tough model. Um, yeah, I think the reds are good. I like the integration of them. I definitely, it definitely makes him feel alive. I feel like we probably, he's so busy, it's really hard to review this guy. Uh, the, like, gray needs smoothed out around his face, whatever this beard situation is. Um, the, uh, the face, uh, or the skin, sorry, here, I was thinking, I was looking at the face in his, in his stomach, which, okay. Um, at any rate, the, um, the skin on his body probably needs to come up to some, some higher highlights in a few places. Um, it, the, one of the problems is his face is kind of lost here, so you want to make sure you're really making this the area of the most focus with the, the best highlights drawing attention in. Uh, and then probably that's, I think, you know, that's what I would focus on. I think the reds are working. You could push it even a little farther, maybe into some purple tones in some places, especially in deep shadows. So that's what I would say. Uh, I'm glad you painted this guy. I really like a lot of these fine cast models drive me bonkers with their the texture and stuff that's on them. It's it's they're t they're a tough paint. I think you did an admirable job. All right, next up, Sebastian. Uh, general feedback and things to work on to achieve to a higher level of painting. Sure. So Sebastian, I took a look at this earlier. Uh, it's a. I know you said some of the pictures were out of focus and whatever, and that's that's fine. I you still got enough good pictures in here for me to review it. Um, the number one thing that I noticed was really stuff like contrast on your secondary elements. So like the trees, the wood, the shears, you know, like we're not really pushing our contrast there on the rest of the things or separating the elements in enough of a way. And you can tell that when we go to the black and white picture, right? Like this is all basically the same lit by only the light from your thing. Same with a lot of this down here. Like we're all in this singular gray tone, right? Because, because it's all just kind of brown. We have to find ways to add texture to pop that to increase the contrast, something like that to make him stand out, okay, is is my basic thought. Uh, so other than that, I would look at, like, how can we make Horticulus himself on the top more interesting? Sorry, we keep I keep going past the picture there. There it is. There's one of it. Like, Horticulus could use for some more glazing and, and volumetric shading on him, probably pushing into, like, purples and greens to make him look more unnatural, alien-like, and demonic. Uh, also, be careful when you're using a color pattern like that on a shell. It's like this random super cartoony element in an otherwise like very earthy piece. So it just stands out. Like the only thing I can look at is that yellow and blue shell. Nothing else in this piece is visible because you have like incredibly desaturated neutral tones over a whole piece. And then you're just like, bang, and also bright yellow and blue, bright yellow and blue, bright yellow and blue. And like that's all the piece screams, right? So you want to make sure you're taking that down. That you, you can you can have a yellow and blue shell if that's the sort of image you're trying to capture. But then we really need to desaturate all those colors through the additions of shadows and highlights, or you know bringing some brown tones into there in general. Like this shell should not be uniformly the same yellow here as is here as is here as is here as is here, right? Like that stuff needs to be volumetrically highlighted the same way. So there you go. Okay, next up, Nicholas, uh, change of pace with some Iron Jaws for attempt at weathering battle damage and Vallejo metal colors. Sure. Uh, I mean, the Vallejo metal colors seem fine. I don't really notice any issue with them. Seems okay. 
Uh, as to weathering and battle damage, uh, yeah, your your little thin scratches are looking okay. Uh, some of your, it, like, your freehand is actually what I think I'll, I want to give you feedback on more than anything. Because if you're going to do freehand stuff like this, of, like, the white over the red, it needs to be crisp and clean first, and then you scuff it. Like, the red over your white doesn't work because you didn't make it opaque red, so it doesn't look like a scratch, which is what you're aiming at over the white, like, right here and here. Those aren't scratches. Those are just red paint on top. I can tell because it's brighter here, right? This has to be... The red that's over the white has to be the same red that's under the white. Okay, so you have to get a really high opacity with those scratches. So you use a darker color to initially scratch it in, then you put the normal red over top. Um, your your little white scratches all seem fine. The battle damage, I wouldn't put silver inside of it. Like, I don't think that actually works. Or scuffed up armor doesn't turn silver on the inside. This is sort of this persistent myth that I don't like. It's not polished armor. It's It would be enameled steel, so it would be quite dull if you scratch that off. If you want to have one little thin line or something of silver where the blade edge immediately polished it through impact, that's fine. But what we need to focus on is, is a lot of smaller, more controlled applications of tiny spots of chipping through. So deep browns and stuff like that. Really, really small in a stippling pattern. Having some of these white scratches turn into deeper scratches where you then run a line beside them is going to add a lot to it. So my battle damage and chipping video will be of good help to you there. All right, next up, Jason. Uh, Illuminator Cesaras. Whatever this guy's name is. Feedback on the non-metallic metal and the blood funnel specifically. How can I make it look real? Do I need to? Yes, you do. <laughs> you asked anytime you think, wait, do I need to do these things? Almost always the answer is yes. That's your subconscious telling you that's the right answer. You had the right answer. You didn't need me. You were just tell trying to get me to let you off the hook. I'm not gonna. Your brain was correct. Trust your instincts. Now on the non-metallic, so I assume you mean like the, the weapon and stuff. Um, yeah, it's fine. Uh, I, I have no issue with it. Looks good. Uh, t you know, probably working on smoothing some of the blends out like here to here or stuff like that. But for the most part, it looks good. Uh, I don't really have any issue with that, the, that weapon effect. I think it looks fine. But yes, as to like this effect, you'd want, first of all, you'd want actual blood down here. So like we should be starting with real blood color, like literally get out blood for the blood god or a, and turn this a deep magenta with some pink highlights and then lay some blood for the blood god over it and then have it be slowly transmuting up like this needs to, if the, the pink to magenta to purple to blue transition needs to, like, pull up the arc here some. Okay. Hope that helps. All right. Rowan with the Pumpkin Knight. I like this guy. I've painted this guy. Uh, feedback on the OSL on the base and the gradients on the armor. Uh, I realize now if you're painting purple, probably wasn't the best choice for it. Uh, sure. So, yeah, um... I do agree that the purple wasn't the right choice. It honestly would work a lot better as just an earthen base. Like, just earth would work a lot better because then the green sword would stand out. Like, he feels like he's standing on some alien world. I don't know where the why the ground is purple. So it's just this weird other element that doesn't need to be there. The OSL on the pumpkin part, his pumpkin head, pumpkin head's gonna get you, looks mostly fine. Uh, the OSL on the ground is way too strong uh, because, like, this is... So... OSL is only as bright as the environment it's placed in, okay? So, if this guy is, in fact, making that much of the ground glow with a glowy sword, then we are at nighttime, and the rest of his armor does not tell me that. He does not have deep shadows. He does not have that kind of stuff. He does not have nighttime washed-out colors, right? Where the only thing lighting it is that. Um, so, like, with the armor, I mean, you'd have to dig way back to see the pumpkin knight I painted, so I can't even tell you that, but, I mean... You know, with the armor, we need more volumetric highlights. I mean, that's the that's the honest answer. The OSL on the, on the ground would look better if it was thinner and more subtle. It would actually be more impactful. And the armor needs more volumetric highlights, more contrast. We're not pushing it enough in those various lights. Um, and if we're going for like a nighttime OSL cast type of thing, then we need to shrink those volumetric highlights, have them fed by the OSL in tone, in a more green tone on the highlights, and then deep in the shadows. A lot more fours, a lot more fives. Okay, next up, Tim, uh, Solitaire for Blackstone Fortress, only going for tabletop standard. Uh, and he didn't have matte varnish because it's hard to find matte varnish in the current world. I understand that. It is actually uh, one of those weird things. Uh, so no issue there, uh, Tim. I'll, I'll, yes, you know you need to matte varnish it. Yes, you do. You're correct. Look, for tabletop standard, if that's what you're going for, I think it's fine. Um, you know, you could smooth down some of these transitions with a couple glazes over the top. And I think that would honestly be my one thing I would tell you to do. Uh, you know, add a little more interest to the base, 
throw down some like pigment powder or something like that it takes five seconds uh don't just put a rock on a you know on a blank base like that's boring like put some dirt down there like make it truly tabletop ready like give me a real basing scheme this little cracked thing i like i i understand what you're trying to do you cut a little piece of plastic card and you're trying to do cracks i don't know what it is it doesn't work is my short answer so like just just give me something it's a rock make it on something place him in somewhere and you're good to go but you know tabletop wise i think he's he's fine okay all right next up abel uh, with his Goliath leader for Necromunda, really tried to push the contrast and let the colors pop. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I mean, this is obviously the older Goliath. Um, you're definitely using bright colors in that way. I think the color composition mostly works. I think what I would tell you is we need to smooth and, like, we need still need to work on our value contrast. You have some nice deep shadows in here. We need to push those more. We need more fours and fives and the transitions between three, four, and five to be smoother. Like, this is rough right here and here. Um, so we just need to really smooth on on getting those the deep parts of those muscle structures uh, shadowed down. It's especially true in the face where the face is kind of flat. So again, more more variation of hue on the face, red tones, blue tones around his lower jowls and cheeks or something. You know, popping up the highlights here, maybe a little more. Those might be bright enough, but then certainly bringing this area down more in shadow, right? Like, if you look at my face right now, look at how much of this side is cast in shadow, right? I'm at a direct above light. See all this blue tone in here, 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 right? Really reinforcing and, and bringing the, that contrast to the fore. That would be my advice for you. All right, uh, Cyril, uh, do you think painting a Space Marine army without using any metallic paints is something achievable? Yeah, sure. It's, I mean, it's crazy. It's going to take you a while if you're really legitimately trying to do, like, non-metallic or something. I, I wouldn't do it, and it's honestly probably won't look as good in most places you would display it because I, there's a reason i paint armies in true metallic metal they just look better when you take them to a tournament or something because the lighting in there is crap and doesn't look good for non-metallics uh so okay so yeah bases look good good jungle bases uh paint job looks pretty nice like it's a good clean application of the thing um i like the low tones you're using for the yellow i think we need a little more one uh in some places like pop up a little more of the highlights especially around the top of the models we need to get a little brighter in the future. Um, maybe in some of the upkicking stuff, there's just a few areas where we need to bring the highlights up a tad bit more. But yeah, for the most part, it's nice. The issue is with your non-metallic, it's just not bright enough in some things. Like the some of the elements of the gun that are meant to be metal aren't popped up enough. You need more one and two. Like working with non-metallic on this scale to really sell it is tough. That's why I wouldn't do an army for it. I mean, again, if you want to do it, and if you can do it, it's awesome. It looks amazing, but you've got to put in the time. So just make sure you know the commitment you're in for before you get into it. But overall, I think it looks good. Okay, next up, Gabriel. Uh, first post, eager for feedback on competition and the approaches here on non-metallic, uh, going for more impressionistic taste. Uh, so again, your picture's kind of far away, but I, I understand what you mean by impressionistic is you're using more colors to render it. That's fine. You still need to push the contrast of value up because that's ultimately what sells non-metallic metal is its brightness. Like it still has to come up to that one and two. And that's kind of what's lacking from things like the thing that uh, Sill stands on. So you want to make sure that you've got that nice and bright, uh, especially even if you're just popping things like the edges up more or those individual light catches and then kind of, you know, smooth those down. I, 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 I have no issue with the color. I think the color usage looks great. So going in this kind of impressionistic blue, I think is fun. I think that really works. But then you've got to continue pushing that up. That's my main piece of feedback for you. Like it still has to come to the same. We still have to cover the same value spectrum, right? But we can we can do that in anything. We can do it in any set of colors and have it read appropriately. But it still has to run the gamut of, of value contrast. Okay. Next up, Jeff Phillips, feedback on your Night Lords, Terminators, proper midnight blue. Uh, any additional feedback you have on the blue would be correct. Uh, the tips on the deactivated um, uh, pla like eye lenses is, yeah, I think just darkening them is fine. Um, yeah, I think the blue works. I think it really does. I think your main uh, thing here should just be working on smoothing the contrast out. That's, I think it's fine. I think it fits. I have no issue with that. I think their eye glow looks nice. Um... You know, especially as an army piece, I think this is good. You know, if you were going to go, if this were to all be for a display or something, I'd have different advice. But as you're clearly working on an army, probably a whole army of these dudes, I think it's really good. Just work on smoothing out your blend some, and I think you're in a good place. 
Uh, as to the magenta plasma effect, it's fine. You just want to make sure you trace that nice line of pink white around the edge of the what the the casing that holds the plasma coils to really sort of sell the glow effect. There needs to be like a, a slight dark line, and then it needs to trace the the light around the edge so it looks like it's glowing, and that'll sell the effect. So there you go. Hope that helps, Jeff. All right, uh, Gurgly, uh, opinion on the highlights and shadows in the Stormcast Eternals armor, also about the shadow and highlight colors, and of course, overall, is the color scheme interesting? Yeah, so I took a look at these guys beforehand. Uh, I really love it. I think this works. I think the blue is really successful. The red infusions and reflections on the piece is exactly what I was talking about earlier. It works for me. That sells for me. I like it. I like the inclusion of the magenta into the blue. I like the sort of yellow tone, the Isis yellow tone you're using for your highlights. I think that's selling for me. I think these guys are great. The only part of this that doesn't quite sell for me is the gold. It feels like it needs to be richer and warmer, given what you're going for here in the lighting scheme. Uh, like the gold feels a little too cold, given the highlight. Um, so I understand you're going for cold shadows, but a little bit more of an inclusion of a slight ochre, and also popping the highlights on the gold a little higher. Ironically, if we can spin around, where's she at? Da -da -da -da. Nope. Yeah, her. Her shield has the right elements in it, like right along here. This feels correct on this one, and then you're missing it on the top line. So this part is what feels right to me. Basically duplicate whatever you did right here over into the rest of the gold, and I think you're absolutely in a great place. The only other thing I noticed was some of their weapons, some of the lights are a little harsh, as far as like kind of they need to be smoothed but overall i think these are great man the highlights look good it looks like he's under a universal lighting color your secondary reflections are aces this this is fantastic work so really good stuff i dig it okay so continuing on uh all right next up john hibbs uh first bust and done a lot on first two first freehand stippling and so other uh yeah so First of all, everything I said earlier, John, still continues to this bust. Like, again, when we're doing busts, it's it's more of everything. So we need a lot more, like, tonal variation, variation of value, contrast, a hue, the whole deal. <clears throat> like her skin, you know, a woman's face in this kind of scale. I should see a lot more colors, a lot more things going on. If you're going for war paint, which is, I suspect, what this is, it needs to be basically not this. Like, because that looks clearly like a paint mark, right? <coughs> excuse me and so what we need here is like you you have to like kind of stipple roughly the war paint needs to have a drier look to it. it needs to feel like it's sitting on top of the skin with texture especially at a bust scale you would see the texture things like the hair more color in the in the skin more color like a lot of stuff like the feathers wouldn't be rough like this we need to like work on our paint control as far as like making sure the right colors end up in the right places. Like we've got the brown of the, the hair here on the back of the ear, you know, all that kind of stuff, John. So my best recommendation to you is you got to do a lot more. Like we've got to take this a lot, lot farther <coughs> for a bust. Same with the eyes, like eyes, eyes on busts mean everything. She's got these big, huge eyes. They're not just circles of color, right? So we got to go, go a lot farther. Okay, uh, Rich, still new to painting minis, and this is the first time trying oils and freehand, just looking for some overall feedback. Sure. Um, so, again, same feedback. I, I, you're, you're new, so the normal feedback's probably going to apply, which is more contrast, and indeed it does. Uh, on the hair, on the skin, on the shield, on the metals, on the horns, just, I mean, all around we need more contrast of value. And on the skin, push your contrast of hue as well. Uh, I like that you scraped the shield and did this cool little Nurgle freehand thing. I think that works. Uh, I think that's fine. If you're going to scratch away at it, like, it needs to be, the freehand needs to be really, really sharp and defined and have a really sharp, clean edge. And then you chip into it with the turquoise color. Again, if you're going to do freehand that you wear away, it has to be perfect freehand first. Then you chip away at it after, okay? So it's a much more complicated thing to do damaged freehand than normal freehand. Uh, but yeah, there you go. That's my general thoughts on it. Hope that helps, Rich. Okay, uh, next up, Carl's, uh, critique and commentary on color composition on this old guy. Uh, yeah, I, I think for the most part it works. The, the one piece that doesn't work is the big yep, right, yellow banner. That's what doesn't fly here, because there's just no, I mean, like, I understand you're using some yellow highlights in the green, but it really doesn't sell with the rest of the model, and all my attention is just like, I can only see this yellow banner, 
if this banner had just been in magenta like the rest of him i would be perfectly happy and i'd have no issues if the banner had been like a deep purple or green like the dragon or you know whatever like a neutral tone like uh, a, you know a deeper ivory or something yep that would all be fine that would all be in balance uh that's the only compositional note that really jumps out at me so there you go hope that helps okay uh james hall uh no i don't think we've ever had Gaslands. uh that's fine uh <clears throat> I don't know what more one and two means. Well, hopefully you do now, James, if you're watching this. One is the highest highlight. Five is the deepest shadow. Three is the midtone. Two is the half step between. And four, two and four are the half step between. So if I say you need more one, it means you need more, more of the brightest tone. Now, uh, general advice specifically how to make brass and bronze look different. Um, sure. I mean, in the end, they don't need to look that different is honestly the answer. I mean, one has more of a red tone to it. One has more of a uh, a brown tone to it. But, you know, with a vehicle like this, especially with what it is, I would focus on some things like oxidation. And you can push, like, more oxidation of a certain color into one of them. So um, bronze tends to have more black oxidation, uh, whereas bronze will oxidize uh, very quickly into your sort of green type of stuff. Um, so they, they're they both going to turn the same in the end if you leave them out forever. But um, you can use elements like that to separate them. Uh, overall, it's a cool car. Uh, I don't, uh, not much feedback I would generally have for it. Uh, I feel like we would probably push some of the contrast on the body of the car itself, but it's a super neat, uh, you know, conversion and grieving of the mini. So yeah, I dig it. Okay, next up, Alberto. Uh, some advice to continue improving in this last work. Yeah, sure. So the first thing that jumped out at me, Alberto, is that your contrast is placed in in parts that aren't serving the overall mini so like this should be the focus but this ultra bright highlight up here on the top of these back robes are doing you a disservice because this draws all the attention up here like you've created a line that's going up here so these should be softened and toned down um and then they should be very bright around here that might not necessarily make sense with the lighting like but it it will draw the attention in here so like a just a glaze of blue over top Effectively, we get too bright right here. I would also focus on smoothing down some of these, like I talked about earlier with the blue. Blue is a tough color to do because it often has a lot of different... Um, it, it, the, the highlight colors have a lot of opacity and so become difficult and show you know your, your layer lines really strongly. Uh, that and I would just create more volumetric highlighting with your magenta pur purple pink color here. It's uh two universally in the same color you have this like ultra high contrast on the blue and then it's much lower on the purple or pink i would also map the whole thing out uh that's one thing i would say maybe i mean like i know you've got regular metallics um but like the all these colors need to be matted out the pink is way too shiny uh just like general reflections not of your highlights but of the reflections. so that would be my feedback for you hope that helps uh, Florian, uh, wanting to sort of do a version of Juan Hidalgo's Plague Marine. Uh, general feedback on the mini and how you can improve yourself further. Also, what color tone should you use for the larger cloth sections? Um, the kind of color you're using here is fine. A sort of uh, desaturated purple tone will generally do, serve you just fine. As to what we need to do here, hey, guess what? It's our old friend, more contrast. Um, so <clears throat> please don't play a drinking game with that. You'll all be dead by the time we get to the end of the review. Uh, but yeah, it's it's just more contrast. Again, deeper brown greens in the shadow tones, pushing up some of our highlights more, especially around the upper part of the mini tops, the shoulder pads, the tank on his back, the upper part of his chest, you know, things like that, um, as well as getting out the edges. But the most important thing I noticed on this is we don't have enough separation of the elements. So we need more hard, dark lines separating things like the the gold of the edge of the shoulder pads from the shoulder pad itself the you know the iconography on the shoulders like the, the elements need to be separated with occlusion shadows right so we need to be making sure that those are nice and deep dark shadows on all of the different separating elements uh that's the that's the number one thing that actually jumped out at me so hope that helps okay next up uh matus uh finished this model today it took some time uh what would i take from it as a competition uh model so yeah okay so as a competition model we need to the the base is letting you down some like you need more uh interesting stuff going on down there a little bit just especially like 
with some more painted elements as far as popping contrast and things like that. But that's minor. I like you worked all the green tones in. I have like for the most part that's fine. But I would but the base is kind of boring is overall what I would say. Like it's fine. Uh now as to the the element itself, again, contrast is really gonna be key here. The various elements of the green don't have the same contrast of as the blue, yet they seem to be the same material. So, like, that's going to be a thing that's going to jump out at me when I'm judging very strongly right away. Same with the big gun he's wielding. Again, there's no contrast along the sides of the gun or stuff like that. Um, the blue has a pretty decent variation. Uh, I don't mind that. I feel like we need to clean up the edges. Like, when you're... All the edges need to be picked out and clean and have small light lines and things like that. Especially on the tops, the upward facing edges specifically is what I'm really talking about. Those need to be really clean, clean, really thin, really sharp. Some of these are a little too chonky. So you want to make sure you're going back and cleaning those up. Uh, turning around to, to these images, I'm not like the yellow. I don't know if you were going like what the a metallic effect or what you were doing there. I honestly don't mind it. Uh, I'm just not sure what it is, and that would challenge a judge. Like, a judge needs to be able to identify what I'm looking at, and I'm not sure what material we're going for there, so that might be judged negatively. The missile caps are boring. We need to do something with those. Those are just, like, literally white puff balls. It looks like he's going to shoot ping pong balls out at me, so we want to do something with those. More contrast, detail, lines, freehand, something to bring it up. And probably, by the way, that's what I'd say for the miniature itself. Like, overall, you can paint really nicely, but that doesn't make your entry necessarily win a competition, right? Competition entries have to have something. It's not just... The trick to competitions is you not just have to paint as good as you can, but you also then have to do something really interesting to stand apart. So you've got to go... It's, it's not just, like, be a really great technical painter and then you win painting competitions. You have to also have this element that separates your work, right? Something you're saying, you're doing... You make the judges stand up and go, oh, okay, that's interesting, right? So that could be freehand elements. It could be, you know, compositional things, damage, something that really gets their attention, and that's what's lacking here, right? There's nothing that super draws me in that makes me think this is this is something that stands apart. That could be other freehand elements, Tau's insignias, just things like that that I'm going to go, oh, that's cool. I need to be able to see it from 10 feet away, and it needs to catch my interest. I need to look at it from a foot away, and it has my attention. And then I need to look from an inch away, and it surprises me, right? And that's ultimately the, the recipe for a competition. And at the one-inch test, I'm not seeing the stuff here that's really exciting me. So there you go. Okay, <clears throat> next up, Daniel. Um, so just asking, so first of all, the base is fine, yes. Uh, and then, so I'll, just, I'll answer that question straight away. Uh, I actually don't mind the base at all. I think it looks rather nice. Um, and then, so talking about the varnish. Okay, so get rid of this varnish. Do not gloss your minis like this. I, it's fine if you want to protect them. This should be matte. The problem with having super gloss varnish is that it creates things like this. This is a light in a shadow, right? All these lights are just universal, and they don't work with the highlighting pattern you already created. When you're doing highlighting, you're taking control of the light. Gloss doesn't care what you did. It's going to do whatever it wants. Okay, and it's just going to reflect. As I turn the mini around, I get lights and shadows and reflections where they shouldn't be and all sorts of weird things bouncing off. It does not work, okay, at this scale because the gloss reflects light as per a one-inch mini. Your highlighting reflects light as per a eight-foot-tall Tyranid bug. Those two things do not work at the same time, okay? So... Don't do it. It doesn't look good. It ruins good paint jobs. Just, I cannot hit this harder, okay? Mat this out. You can play with occasionally having like satin textures and things. There can be value to having satin textures and things. There can be value to having gloss in very particular elements. Um, there are ways to use gloss in, in painting, but they are few and far between. So the general rule should just be things look better in matte. So that's my honest feedback for you. I, I hope that helps. I do really like the red color you achieved here, by the way. Like, I think your actual painting you did, especially on the skin, is aces. I dig it. I wish it was matte. I'd like it a lot more. So there's my honest feedback for you. Okay, next up, Michael. Uh, big lot of rescued stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, this is tough to give feedback on for a whole army because uh, I suspect you're going for, you know, a big tabletop army you're converting and orcs have just a ton of figs. So I kind of scrolled through this, and I think you did a good job of resuscitating them. They they look overall nice. Like, if your goal here is tabletop quality, Michael, I think you're you're very successful. So that's my honest answer. Cool stuff. 
Okay. Uh, Alan, uh, feedback on the dwarf. Uh, where could you improve overall? Yeah, so um, this dwarf is interesting. Uh, the, the things that jumped out at me, um, I, I like a lot of your color composition. I think that's nice. One of the biggest things we need to do is, first of all, this picture is like way overexposed and lighted. Um, like you can tell from when we go to the black and white. Like look at how much actual just pure white we have there. That's just too much direct light on this mini. Um, so we need to diffuse that light more. I can tell you've got like two lights because I can see the two shadows. Maybe put like a paper towel over them or something like that just to kind of weaken them down. But things you need to work on, <clears throat> the gold isn't quite selling for me. More yellow tone and more one. So more three and one is actually the areas that we need. Uh, more smoothing of the three into the five. Uh, the um, And then the beard is very boring and flat. It's all just kind of this uniform color. If I was going to pick one thing on this mini, other than just like smoothing your blends, which is and sort of applying your paint cleanly, like it feels like we need to get some more water into the paint and apply a couple more layers of things because some of this is rough. Um, adding more gray tones, black tones, uh, things like that into the beard while still having it white and really picking out the lighting of how the beard would reflect light is the number one thing that jumps out at me, Alan. So there you go. Hope that helps. All right. Next up, Keese. Uh, Raythor, the start of an Eldar detachment. Does the freehand suggest a ghostly face? And separation of elements. Um, yes, it does. I actually quite love the freehand. I think it looks super cool, man. That is a great effect, and I think you absolutely nailed it. Now, as to the separation of elements, I think we need to work a little more on that. Some of these, especially the purple areas, are very flat. Um, that's fine. I'd push the contrast on some of them, especially these upper shoulder pads. Like these, these leg areas have much more highlighting than the top parts. I really love the face, dude. I think it super works. It's creepy as all get out, and I dig it. Um, but as to like separation of elements, we need some more dark lines and stuff like that separating these various elements. And if you're not wanna, if you don't want to go in and black line it, just some soft, subtle shadows glazed in here into the various elements separating it. I think we could keep pushing that and that would really help. But overall, this looks great. It's a fantastic start to a, to a force. I love the colors, love the composition, love the freehand face effect. I think it sells a thousand percent and it's a it's an absolute triumph. So well done. Okay, Ivan, uh, outside of glazing on some of the non-metallic metal, what could be done to these guys to solidify them as a competition entry? Sure. So yeah, I mean, definitely refinement. And that's gonna be my overall answer, by the by is refinement um like they look good but we're gonna i'm gonna do it through the lens of this guy because this guy will really summarize kind of what i was looking for so let's talk about this guy in terms of if i was a judge in competition so things like the lines that your battle damage doesn't look realistic like it's the white underneath wouldn't be the color of the underside of the scratch it would be a brighter uh highlighted orange yellow um the scratches are too consistent like in their size and then they're they're very oddly placed like they're not telling me an organic story they just feel like these very simple scratches that are happening around they feel like paint the white line need the, the light line needs to be thinner the scratches need to vary in width they need to have some kind of different thing going on like the claw here on the leg works okay for me some of these scratches on the bottom like that's way too much white that's way too much stuff like that the edge highlights need to be thinner more sharper more refined and that's what i would say like again it's refined 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 the gun needs to be smooth. The edges on the silver on the top need to be sharper and then smooth down. Uh, like we have a fat edges on we have fat edges on a lot of this mini. We need to we need to thin those edges up. They need to be like a razor blade kiss to the edge, right? If we're talking about competition. Uh, so that's like it's it's all in refinement, Ivan. You're doing a nice job here. We've got good contrast in the reds. Now we need to put in the extra hours of work. Like the you spend. The, an equal amount of time on competition pieces in the last 10% of your work because it's all refinement. Like the difference in competition is I'll spend 20 hours on a guy and then I need to spend another 30 hours refining the detail and making sure everything's perfect, right? That's that's the competition time frame. So we got to extend that out and make sure we refine all that stuff. There you go. Hope that helps. All right, guy, a slightly modified Hive Tyrant, biggest mini you've ever attempted. How to continue to improve and what you need to work on. Uh, so, have we made the large areas interesting? The wings, more. The skin, no. The skin is very flat, very samey. I mean, you can see it when we go to this image. Like, that's all one color. That's it. Right? There's no variation of hue, no variation of value. It's quite boring. So the skin is, uh, is, is what's failing here. The blue wings, sure. I like the light. I like the catch on them. We could add a little more texture and stuff like that to the wings, but it's really the skin. Way more variation of tone and value in the skin is my biggest piece of feedback for you. So there you go. 
Okay, next up. Uh, Antonio, uh, tried to push the contrast and texture more on this mini. Also, some tips on blending uh, TMM. Sure. So, I mean, blending true metallic metal is tough. You've got to kind of, you know, work it very carefully. Oftentimes, a stippling technique will be the way to go. Um, we do need to refine the blending on here. I like the contrast on the wheels, but we need to push that up more. The big rubber of the wheels themselves don't feel like they have enough contrast on them. So that's what I would say. Like they need texture contrast more than anything where we see scrapes and scratches and highlights on the upper sides of the, especially the tread. Uh, on the guy itself, um, he seems fine. Uh, like he has the most contrast and I, I, I think that's good. But his the problem is we've got too much dark and it doesn't smooth into it. So like this this line going down the center of him, this should not all be five, right? That needs to smooth out. Like you, you're, look at a human being, there's not a dark line down the center of their chest, right? There's, there's we have to connect like the upper part of the muscles here and the upper part of the muscles here. Like it's not just about having this <coughs> dividing line. Your, your blend on the muscle groupings, they still have to connect, right? It's like the top here, the top here. So like these should be on the sides of the muscles, it should be one of the abs and then maybe like a two, three. And so your three is acting as your shadow in the middle part of the muscles, right? Whereas on the lower underside of the muscle, that's where we get the five, right? So it's the full volumetric of what's going on. Hope that helps. <laughs> okay. Joshua, uh, paint this banshee as if she had been burnt at the stake, uh, white dress in night conditions with a red light from underneath and also showing damage from smoke and flames. Okay, so we tried 62 different things at once. Like, my number one thing is probably didn't need all of that. That's number one. Now, okay, so that's, like, this picture's gonna work it out. That's not what's going on here, okay? Like, don't try to set your lighting tonight. Don't try to do this. Like, that's it, focus on a couple things at a time, okay? Now, but if we wanted to go that direction, again, we're trying to like, you are literally trying to do a decathlon when what we need here is to run a good race. Okay. So, all right, let's, let's get into it. Um, so the red light from underneath, I don't know what the red light from underneath is. She should have an orange, yellow light from underneath, specifically yellow. Cause it's fire. Um, near fire goes very yellow as it diffuses farther away there's a squaring principle that slowly diffuses it and makes it feel more ochre to orange, okay? Now, um, so when we, if we're talking about fire down here on the base that's lighting her up, then I, I have a video on doing burnt texture, right? On doing a burnt texture. And what you want to effectively do there is you're stippling in from like an uh, the, the edges need to still be embers, so those are going to be sort of a bright yellow into orange embers, into uh, a deep red, brown, black, and then into black and char, and that needs to take up the most of it, right? And as far as the dress goes, so white at night turns light blue, right, because it's lit by the moon. So that would be your highlight color, where it's still white. It would be this soft white blue that then transitions into the black of where it's been burnt, and if you're going to have an orange light from below, then we've got two light sources, the diffuse overwhelming light source of the moon and the undershade of intensity and closer but weaker of the fire, right? Because a single fire is not more powerful than the moon. But it's more intense and close. So it needs to go like soft orange light into the main shadow, right? The deepest shadow up then into the soft blue and then white where it, white blue where it's catching the high highlight. It's a really, really complicated lighting scheme. Like you have picked the almost most complicated thing you could pick here. Whereas it feels like what we need to work on is probably like paint refinement, getting things clean, like her hair and stuff like that. I'm seeing there's a lot of like chonky layers and stuff like that. We wanna work on smooth brush control, things like that, right? Uh, so again, walk before you run, before you do a decathlon. Um, focus on things like keeping the elements separate, your different, you know, getting your paint applied carefully and cleanly. That kind of stuff is what I would really be focusing in on getting, you know, smooth blends. And then let's go for like the most complicated lighting structure in history. So again, not trying to be rude. I don't want to be mean. It's not the goal. I just want to give you the straight story and say like, sometimes we're, you know, we got to, there, there are better things you could be doing than trying to sell all that. But I, I hope I explained how you would sell all that if you were interested. If you want to give it another try, that's fine. My fear is you're pushing out of your learning zone 
and into a zone where it's going to be tougher. So uh, that's the challenge. We always want to be in that learning zone where we're where we're pushing ourselves and challenging ourselves, but not putting ourselves in like the fear zone where we where we're not sure how to attack what we're doing at all. Okay, uh, Adrian uh, tried out some more TMM, especially with gold. Uh, okay. Yeah, so uh, overall, cool piece. Uh, the heat feels a little too hot. We probably need to wheel that barrel heat back just a little. Like it needs to, there's too much yellow. It needs to go into more orange red a little quicker. And those transitions need to be a little smoother. Um, as to the gold, keep pushing the contrast on it. That's, again, our metals still feel pretty flat here. So I'd keep pushing the glazing in of colors into the gold. We need to take more control of the light and the reflections. That's where I feel like we're missing some opportunities. So like right now, your matte blue has far more contrast than your metallic gold. Okay, so just as a point of reference. <coughs> Hope that helps. Okay, uh, next up. All right, Edwin, this is very nice, but this is like a novel. Uh, so first ever attempt at animal fur, and that's where you're looking to receive feedback, which I like. Now, I want to start by saying this is a super cool conversion. Uh, so like, I super dig this. So uh, what, a, what a fantastic conversion of this whole Christmas sleigh. Um, okay, so I want to get in on the deer here. Uh, nope, nope, nope. Need to go back. Go back to, yeah. I. What I really need, if that's if, if you're mainly looking for a shot of the deer, I need a good shot of the deer. Okay. Um, not that I don't find your process of how you convert it interesting, because it is. But let's talk about it from here. So, the the answer is no. We're not really selling the fur of them because they're still a furred creature. You've got sculpted fur of their mane, but then we also have fur here. We need to respect, there needs to be more contrast and more volumetric lighting. The best video I've seen on this is honestly done by Cult of Paint. Um, they did it recently. Andy did one with his wolf. I think he kind of created a pretty seminal video on it right there. So I would go watch that Cult of Paint video where he's painting a wolf. But there needs to be more volumetric highlighting on the muscle structure of the, of the reindeer itself with hyper thin lines and scratches of these fur. And then on the mane itself, right, then we need to have the overall volumetric highlighting expressed. Like right now, it, it isn't. We don't have thin lines. I don't see the fur. I don't see shading. I don't see that. So like we need to be picking out and really it's just a matter of like very sharp, very thin lines being done thousands and thousands of times. Uh, that's where you go with animal fur. So um, overall, we need more of that like that detail to pick all that out and more contrast of value over the whole thing. Okay, next up, Justin, uh, 15th ever miniature. How do we keep improving toward tabletop? Sure. So, um, yeah, cool, cool Tyranid. Um, my honest answer is going to be much what you would expect, which is continuing to push our contrast and volumetric lighting. Like, the white looks pretty rough because it's just kind of washed and messy. Like, we want to make sure we go in and clean that stuff up, push our highlights in the areas where they should be. Your texturing pattern here is really interesting, but again, we still need to respect the lighting with it. So like not every, these things are all at different angles and should have different colors. So if we're gonna go for this pattern, it still needs some kind of universal environmental lighting that is respecting the overall volumes. So what I would work on is continue to push your contrast and how that respects volumetric lighting. That's what you wanna to push toward. Even basic shading and highlighting can push a long way to make a tabletop element really stand out. But cool patterning. I think it's a really neat execution of this model. So yeah, good stuff. Okay, next up, uh, Demos, Demos, sure, why not? Uh, yesterday's work, uh, sure. Uh, generally, we want to ask for feedback. I, I'm glad you finished this thing. How can I help? Um, yeah, I mean, th the answer is not near enough contrast, need more separation of elements, need a lot more black lines between, highlights on it. Um, the eye glow doesn't work because we don't have the dark line around and the bright needs to be inside. This should be softer. The edge can have that high hit, but then everything else needs to be a softer glow. Same with here around the central piece. You have to have like, I, if you go watch my glowing eyes video, that'll take you through that. So just a lot more separation of elements, contrast, and your the OSL glow doesn't really sell because we're not respecting the like, one is the brightest point that is the thing that glows, two is the glow around it, three is an occlusion shadow where the elements separate, and then a soft two of a glaze of that color that is dimmer sort of than the original two. So there you go. Uh, Michael, all right, first 75 millimeter uh, mini you completed. Can I get some feedback on the skin and overall composition? 
uh, gift and plan poorly so I ran out of time to add texture and things like coat shirt pants. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely the answer. Like, when I looked at this, the mini's too flat. Like, overall, the mini's too flat. Everything I've said when you're in busts or 75 mil, see all previous comments I've made here. More, 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 more. You know you're missing the texture, but at the same time, the skin doesn't have enough tonal variation, enough contrast. We need to push up that contrast. The, you know, this guy's out. He's in the sun. He's sweating. He's on the deck of a ship. So he'd have the satin highlights of specular reflections from skin. The golden stuff needs to have deeper reflections in it. All that kind of stuff. So more contrast, more elements, more texture. You, you knew what it was before you even came to me. So that's my honest feedback for you. With the skin, I need more elements of tone like blues around the chin, reds, things like that, more yellow into the upper highlights. Same with the hair. It needs to have more of a satin reflection, that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, Poncho, uh, largest model I've ever painted. Um, yeah, he's a good tabletop Archeon. So I looked at this guy earlier. I mean, my answer is going to be the same as most of what, everything I've said for most of this video, uh, except with Archeon, we can go a little more detailed, which is to say more contrast, on things like their heads, his body, the wings, the armor itself, all that stuff. It's just more, 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 more contrast, right? Just because he's really big and it takes a long time, but like that's what we ultimately need. Like all the black is pretty flat black. The skin and the bird is pretty flat. You know, the bird's beak is more or less flat. The feathers are more or less flat. The white is kind of flat, all that kind of stuff. So just, again, pushing our contrast way up and then also having detail, things like... Um, you know, really working in things like texture in the wings in a strong way and stuff like that. Um, pushing the contrast on the Slayer of Kings so it really stands out and is an interesting piece. All those kinds of things, Poncho, is what I'd recommend for you. Doing big pieces is tough. They take a long time. It's a very nice looking Archeon. I think you did a nice clean job on him. He'll look great on the tabletop. That's where you want to go if you want to go to the next step. Okay. Uh, Jasper, uh, target questions. Basically, he was you're aiming for tabletop quality. Wanted to create a pseudo OSL effect where the brightest spot of the Trogoth is their nose. Uh, does the effect read as intended, and how could I improve the effect for larger centerpiece Tragos? Um, no, it doesn't work, because it just looks like, it literally looks like he's wearing zinc oxide, like he's somebody, like he's a lifeguard at the beach. Because it's too strong of a contrast just suddenly standing there. Now, as to tabletop quality, things like more basic contrast and picking out of, like, these ropes versus the wood versus the stone is something I would do. Like, I know you're trying to stay simple, but, I mean, again... This is all just one big mess of basically the same color. Like, that gray does not stand out from that brown in any way, nor does that stand out from the wood. So just stuff like that. If you're if you're trying to get a, a stood-out face, then you just want to push your highlights up there. Don't, don't go to this hard white. Just take the area of the ridges here and the top of his forehead and his mouth and his cheeks and the back of these his jawbone and his nose and really just push and pop those highlights above where you're going. And that's it. Add a little pink tone or red tone or something like that in couple soft glazes that'll help draw more attention to it because eyes are drawn to red naturally so even if you have just some soft pink glazes and then some high highlights you'll draw the attention to the face okay next up alan thomas uh with his reviews uh yeah absolutely like i alan i, I love how far you've come it's absolutely fantastic uh what's the one thing i really need to drive directed practice toward here um yeah sure so we're we're doing some really great stuff here alan I've, I've watched this growth this progression over time in your work and it's just it's fantastic i mean i really really love it buddy i've watched it come um with the black armor i mean like just the the journey here from that to this is just amazing and, and i'm absolutely in love with it man now uh the black armor we need to smooth out some of the blending uh and continue pushing some of the volumetric highlighting it's we still don't have quite enough light there and the transition between the gray and the black is still a little rough um on the ha iron halo we don't quite have enough of the yellow tone like you do in the shield i think the shield is more successful we still need to smooth the blend up between the white and other things it's always the hardest part i hate it but here we are uh but other than that i think that's what i would kind of focus on this is looking really really good so I think you're doing absolutely fantastic, Alan. I hope to see some stuff in the various uh, types of reviews next year from you. Uh, I love to see this journey, and I've been very happy to go on it with you, buddy. Okay, uh, Arian, here's the third model so far. Forward to the review. Sure. Um, it's it's contrast. So I, I'm not sure what's going on here with this element of it. Like, that looks still primed, I guess. I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to see what... I don't know if the work is finished, is my question. Like, what are we... 
Is this not a finished picture? Probably not. Maybe that is. Yeah, it's for finished models, Orlin. So my answer, though, is going to be more contrast, refine the elements, smooth things out, panel lining. A lot of the things I've already said here, right? So um, you can probably draw advice from all that stuff. Uh, with your third miniature, your real goal is just working on getting your paint applied clean and thin. And, like, paint cleanliness is the number one thing. Like, here's a spot where you didn't get the red. Here's a spot where we got the gold onto here. Just stuff like that's what you want to be refining. I wouldn't worry too much about feedback on your third miniature. Like, just keep working on getting paint applied, and you can go from there. Okay, Gabriel. Uh, struggling with skin lately. Any advice on what I'm doing wrong is appreciated. Uh, it's because we don't have enough contrast. Like, that's, it's, that's just it. We need to... We need to soften the, like the face has a lot of different light areas. Again, really look at my face compared to his face, right? Look at the different lights, the tones, the reds, the blues, all these different areas of contrast, right? That are happening. Like, look at my face. Look at me. Look at me. No. So you, you know what I mean? Like, that's what, what's going on here. We're not popping up enough ones. We don't have enough three, fours, and fives. We don't have enough hue. Like, we just need more variation of tone and value in the skin. Simple answer. I, I, it's a lot of things what I've talked about. Go back and look at that uh, corn, or not corn, sorry, that Untamed Beast model from earlier. That's the best example I've seen this month. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, not even going to try on that name. Uh, last project for the year, OSL from blue light to yellow gold. I mean, you just have to kind of cast it. It should be a sharp reflection with white light with just a soft blue next to it. But generally, you don't want to... Like, blue light on a true metallics is always really tough. The number one thing I noticed here is a lot of these lights are happening in a really chonky way. They Your, your OSL effect isn't really selling because it's too chonky and too strong. And what I mean by that is we'll flip around to this picture. This is going to be the easiest way to say it, to say it. So this is this blue light from his eye, and you're meant to be casting all of this. The trick is that's way too intense, way too intense. This thing is a spotlight, right? And like, again, the rules of like cast glow is they need to be weaker than the source of the light. Here, these are just as intense and bright as the source, if not brighter. Softer, like you can gather around edges with a, with a very thin edge highlight, maybe on a corner or something, but then the rest should be this soft blue transition of a glaze and just so light. Because blue wouldn't show up really well on red anyways. Like, it's not a highly reflective color to the blue spectrum. So, it's just, it's showing way too strongly. So, we need to wheel that back and just the infusion of blue in this light tone passed over it in a soft glaze. That would be my biggest recommendation for you there. Okay, next up, Ryan Easterling. Uh, feedback on the blend from the skin to the rocky parts and if the bases need more work. Um, I think you could do a little bit more work on the bases just by kind of popping up some more highlights, like even just a directional dry brush where you draw some light toward the front or something, or scatter some red pigment around or green pigment around. Those kinds of things would do some work. I mean, again, and those are all just like, I'm trying to keep you in like the five second task area. Um, how does the transition between the skin tone and the, and the, the rockiness work? Yeah, fine. I've got no issue with it. I, I looked at these guys earlier. I think it's good. Going for a tabletop kind of traga thing. I think you're fine. Uh, the skin, I think, works great. Really nice color contrast. I think it's fine. So at a tabletop level, I think you're in the right place. I mean, again, if you're going to try to push beyond that, then the rule of more contrast comes in and kicks in here. More contrast of value. Okay. Uh, submission for this month. Uh, try to paint as neat and clean as possible. Uh, hey, Sang. Uh, boy, is this a hyper clean guy. You aren't kidding. Um, like, look at the precision. Um, so I understand you're not going, you're going for a more heavy metal, like evenly thing with mostly speaking in edge highlights here. Cause I know what you're kind of aiming at. So that's how I'll give you feedback. I still think we could do with some soft glazing and color control around some of these large flats. Um, it feels like the, the deep blue color is still just a little too uniform. Um, even like on the heavy metal boxes, they'll, you know, when they're in there, when they're sort of in their groove. They still do some soft shading, and so I think just a little bit of soft contrast, <coughs> uh, especially on things like the gun, the blacks, and the blue, the deeper blue color, would really work a long way here. The green sells for me. Love it. Nice bright light. Nice dark ring around it. Glowing eye. A+. Plus. I, I dig it. Okay, next up, Austin. Uh, several new techniques. Techniques. Feedback on what you've done. True metallic, volumetric highlighting, overall color composition. Sure. Uh, overall color composition works great. Love it. No issues at all. Now, uh, volumetric highlighting, need to keep pushing. This is the image I wanted to go to. We need to keep pushing. 
um, it's good. It's it, like you're you're getting somewhere really solid. We just need to keep pushing, especially where the overall volume. So like a lot of these top areas, especially around her claws, her horns, the head, these masks on top, the tops of her breasts and like things like that, those need to be popped up a little higher. Uh, and then we need to bring the lighting and so the deeper shading, especially here on like the areas of where the, 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 you know, her leg is sort of totally turned away from the light. You can see even when I turn my hand, look at how deep that shadow becomes right here. Right. And like, I'm, this is not an overtly lit room, right? Like notice that difference, how the light, the shadow still gathers at the top, but look how instantly that really falls into like really deep shadow. I'm five degrees off of center there. Right. That's all you have to go to get those really deep shadows. So that's the kind of thing I would say. But yeah, looks a great looking piece. Keep pushing. But yeah, really cool work. I really like the color choice. Composition is honestly really great. I think your your like the orange and magenta and purples and then the blue pop. I think that really works. I dig that a lot. Okay, Liam, first time posting. Uh, so uh, is this a Black Legion or a guy in blue armor? Yeah, sure. So. Yeah, this is Black Legion, man. I think this overall works. Like, I think you're probably going for a high tabletop standard here, and because you've got the just kind of the way I'm reading it, and I think it overall works. Um, you know, if I were going to keep pushing it, I would tell you to push up the the to keep pushing the contrast on the armor a little farther and smooth it out just a little more. But honestly, I think you've did a, done a great job here. Uh, the skin honestly could use a little more contrast, and don't forget to put your light line around the edge of the gun, or again, like I mentioned earlier, around the end, edge of the plasma cartridge. Uh, cast onto here, but this is great work. I like your, I like the way you've captured the lights here. Doesn't read as blue at all. Completely reads as black. Remember, it's fifty percent rule. If fifty percent of your surface is black, the surface is black. Okay, so there you go. All right, next up, uh, Benjamin. Uh, tried to work on light composition while trying too much, not spend too much time, but still reach a display quality. Well, those two things don't go together. You spend all the time. That's. <laughs> display or competition means that time is no longer a factor only the end result matters but i get what you're saying um overall this guy's good really love the face the expression you did draw a lot of attention here which i like um i think the nice highlights around the red work i would like to see a little more detail picked out down here all of the front of the bike kind of falls into a little bit of sameness um whereas this area here really works for me like the rust pigmenting uh we could work a little more pink tones into some parts of the face uh, especially around the lips and the nose. But uh, overall, this guy's really great, man. I think you did a really nice job here. I like your highlighting. I like the uh, burn on the gun. Careful with this line, whatever this situation is right here on the gun. That kind of looks a little weird and, and chunky, but overall, nice. And then on the skull, I would pop up just a couple little more areas on the skull to make it stand out, but that's part of the overall, like, the front of this thing is a little boring. Um, it just needs, like, a few few areas popped out just a little, maybe a little more contrast not so it's competing with this, but just so it's still got some visual interest to it. Uh, love the broken road. Love the base. This is a great piece, Ben. I think you really did a fantastic job here. So, yeah, really, really enjoyed this one. Okay, next up, John. Uh, thanks for all you do. Some feedback on this October model result, composition and color choices. Yeah, they're fine. I mean, I don't want to give you too simple of an answer, but I think they're fine. It's kind of an old model and it's a little weird and the, you know things like the textures are strange and the, it uses that old green stuff modeled fur which just looks terrible um but yeah i mean color composition wise yeah you're fine he's a christmas orc you've got red and green but you added enough shadows and stuff like that to the the red it's fine i there's not honestly a lot of colors on this guy um there's red yellow and green which is generally fine so yeah no issues composition's fine Okay, Ryan Johnson. Uh, so, uh, basically, um, uh, overall critique and advice is welcome. Sure. Um, I like the axe. Uh, I think the white armor is nice, though you need to soften your transition into your shadow color. So, again, between the four and five, we need to soften that color down, make sure it's a nice, smooth transition in there, and uh, and make sure that works. And then, as far as you, you mentioned the... Uh, what did we mention? The free hand on the suds here, that works for me. I have no issue with that. And the snow looks good. Nice. You have a nice mix of chunk and powder, which is really good. I think the axe is my favorite part. Um, I feel like some of the, the other steel metals could have a little more um, defined contrast and light on them that keeps them up with the, the axe to keep pace. But uh, yeah, same with the gold. Needs a little more pop, a little more shadow, a little more inclusion of like 
uh, umber tone, sepia tone, stuff like that, maybe a chestnut color, those kinds of things. But overall, cool model. I dig it. All right, Jim Norfolk, uh, 12th Mini and First Bust Project. So I've already commented a lot on busts, and Jim, the same thing is going to apply here. Um, this feels painted very much like we would 28 mil. Now, I like the pink tones you had in the cheeks. I want to talk about things I like that you did, which is I like the pink tones here in the cheek um, and in the neck. I think that's really good. But overall, we need to go a lot farther. We need to go 200% farther. More on the skin, more details, more... Uh, more details around the eyes, more uh, color and stuff around the base of the cheek. This line up here in her head needs to be more deeply shadowed. The light and transition down here needs to be stronger. The hair needs more individual stranding. Like, we're there. You're, you're getting along, okay? Like, you're pushing yourself, and I like it. Keep going, okay? Like, keep working in that texture of the skin, that color to the skin. Push that, that uh, contrast of hue farther, Okay, and really show me some of the detail here, like on the edges of the skin on her neck. Those should have like some higher highlights, the, the around the edges where it's kind of torn open, right? And the uh, the eyes need a little more variation in what's going on inside them because they're so big. Like I should be able to see some of the the detail of what's going on with the eyes. The hair itself needs a little more Pantene Pro V kind of controlled color here or whatever, you know, where the, the highlights are a little more directed. But I like the tones overall. You really nailed blonde hair, which I like. I see a lot of people go way too yellow. This is a great execution on blonde hair. So I think you did very well there. I do want to call that out. And I like the soft tones. Just keep going. But you're on a good road. For your 12th mini overall, You're, I mean, this is absolutely great. Just keep pushing. All right, next up, Nick. Uh, first attempt at painting entirely with oils. Uh, so just looking for feedback, overall color choices, skin, and the non-metallic metal. Yeah, so I'll, I'll be honest with you, it's, it's kind of boring overall. So just number one thing, um, fill your gaps. <laughs> like, these gaps are egregious. Um, so, like, please make sure those are better put together, because, I mean, that is just, like, on his foot. I mean, those are, those stand out a lot. I, it, it just, it's, that's not great. I would add a color for the mohawk. I understand you're going kind of going for this monotone thing, but it just looks like it's not painted. That's my honest answer. If you want to stay in this scheme, then we need to draw a lot of thin white lines up in that hair and have it go to white and flyaways and stuff like that at the top. The non-metallic, I think, is okay. It needs more, like, you have all your colors, but we really need to smooth it out and take better control of the light. We'll use this area here as just an example. There should be a broader highlight here because that's upward facing. These are reflected lights. They should be smoother and there should be more two. Like we're really missing a lot of two in this whole composition as far as the light goes. We're really jumping like from one, we have minimal three, and then we go right to four or five. Uh, so that's kind of what jumped out at me. As to the skin, again, more variation of hue and value. This is really what's going to show it off. I don't have any red tones, brown tones, sepia tones, purple tones, magenta tones, all the things we should have to make skin feel alive and a little more realistic. So that's the kind of stuff I'd want to see there. Okay, James, uh, looking for general feedback on this, thoughts on the effect, the direction with the wraith bone and the soul stone. Um, yeah, man, I think this looks great. I think the wraith bone looks incredible. I think the soul stones look really good. Honestly, I think this is a fantastic piece. I'm not sure I have a huge amount of feedback for you on this is my honest answer. Like I kind of zipped around this guy earlier uh, I like how the blue light underneath is, or the turquoise light, I should say, is, like, really strong, since that's deeply in shadow. Volumetrically, it seems strong. I think this is an absolute fantastic piece. I love what you did with the Soul Stones. I mean, I think this thing rocks, man. I don't have much feedback to give you. I think for what you're trying to execute and what your goals were here, I think it's A+. Uh, if you want some minor note, your... Uh, canopy, which should be made of glass, needs a light catch up top here on the top of the shadow parts. Much like you have with the gems, like you've captured a light catch with your gems, but we don't have any light catch in the glass. It's the same concept as to how light's hitting in the dark part and then filtering through a translucent substance to come out at the bottom, but we don't have the light catch in the glass. Minor note. Looks great though, man. I mean, that is really good. Okay, Jeff, uh, basically painting at your maximum level of ability, plateaued, I'm very interested in feedback on what would help me improve. Yeah, so overall what I've noticed here is what we need to, so we, we need to work on sort of smoothing 
things out a little bit, especially working with all your colors and understanding. Some of the moon looks kind of rough, things like that. We do need to still push the contrast, like the red of the mushroom doesn't have contrast. These red don't have... The wood needs more texture. So, like, here's the... Uh, Jeff, I'm going to tell you the two things I want you to really work on, okay? One, tonal variation, variation of hue. The goblin needs a little more contrast. What he really needs is color. There's no pink in his nose, in his ears, in his lips, that kind of thing. Like, working other hues in, okay? And then texture. Things like the wood, the mushroom, having texture that identifies the element as what it is. Like, the wood looks very flat. The metal looks very flat. All these things look flat. So you want to work in that texture. Those would be the two things I would challenge you at with deliberate practice to keep pushing yourself. So... There you go. With that, that brings us to the end of the last PMP full review. Do check the new event, and if you're working on a project that will fit, feel free to submit uh, to that. New event is up. Each event will have the rules of what type of model you're allowed to, to enter. Don't forget, if, you're if you enter something that's not on that list, I will just delete it <laughs> out of the event. That's what's going to happen. Don't be surprised. I warned you in advance, uh, but there you go. Hope that all helps. Thank you to everybody who submitted. 2020 has been a rough year. It's so been so amazing to see all these incredible creations, all the beautiful work. All this has done is we've pulled together as a community and create and continue to create incredible art. And I want to thank everybody who submitted over this year. And I'm looking forward to a 2021 where I get to see uh, so many awesome pieces and give so much great feedback. So thank you all. And we'll see you next year.